Hi everyone, welcome to Play Hooky with me. My name is Roz, and today I wanna to share with you my top 10 quick tips and tricks for crocheting. These are just my personal favorites that I have found have really helped me a lot during my crochet journey, and I'm hoping that after you've watched this video, you'll find something to add to your crochet toolbox. Also, if you have any tips or tricks that you'd like to share, please leave them in the comments uh, below. I would love to hear from you, and I'm sure anyone viewing would love to see them as well. So with that said, in no particular order, let's get started. Tip number one, the needle threader. This helps me a lot when I'm trying to thread a yarn needle. Uh, I don't know about you, but there are some days where the yarn is just splitting on me and I'm wasting a lot of time and just fiddling with it, where this just is such a time saver. To use, just insert the little diamond wire here into the eye of your needle. Get your yarn, pull it through. And you're done. Tip number two, the magic tail. This is a great alternative to the magic circle when you need a tight center and you're not quite uh, comfortable doing the magic ring or circle. Begin your first round as you normally would, typically at say chain three or four with a slip stitch. And at this point, let's just pretend that we need to do 12 single crochets into the center of this. What you want to pay attention to is your tail. You want to carry the tail along as you make your 12 single crochets or whatever your pattern is calling for. I'm just carrying the tail along with me. Before you slip stitch to complete your round, take your tail and pull on it to cinch your center closed. Tip number three, the magic knot. This is my favorite knot, hands down. This knot is not going to come apart on you. This is ideal when you are running out of yarn and you need to add a new skein to your existing piece of yarn. To do this, we're going to be working on two ties, one here and one here. To begin, take one side and tie to the other. You're just tying like a shoelace. Now do the same thing on the opposite side. Take this piece and tie it to the one below. Tying like a shoelace. Now pull on both yarns until the knots merge. Now you can snip the yarn and you can get as close as you like. That thing is not coming apart. Tip number four, choose the right hook for the job. I wanted to focus here on the tips of these two hooks. This one here is an inline hook and this one is a tapered hook. And this is all based on the throat of your hook here. Here in the US, we call this the Susan Bates. This was designed by Susan Bates and a common brand for the tapered is Boy. So we have Team Bates and Team Boy. Which one is best? It really depends on the crocheter. I use both depending on the yarn and the project. As you can see with the baits, we have a very sharp uh, tip here where this is a little bit softer on the tapered. But the main reason I wanted to share this with you is because of the inline aspect of the baits. This is ideal if you have any kind of tension issues. As you can see with the tapered, it narrows quite a lot here. So if you do have any issues with tightness, this is just going to accentuate it. I would suggest that you give the inline a try because of this wider neck here. This will definitely help to make your stitches more consistent and looser. Tip number five is the invisible seam. This is ideal when you're working with multiple colors of yarn and you don't want the yarn to be seen. I have a full video on how to do this and I'm going to add a little info card here and I'll also add a link in the description box below. You can either do this working with it on the table or you can hold it and sandwich it together. 
but essentially what you want to do is you want to work in the middle of your stitches and just simply going to weave in and out in a crisscross fashion getting as close to the middle as you can sort of where the chains are attaching this makes a very nice flat join as well as just being very hard to see tip number six working with dark yarn I think we all know that the biggest tip for working with dark yarn is lighting, lighting, and more lighting. But you can take that a step further by the style of lighting that you're using. Natural daylight is ideal, but we don't always have that luxury. So what I would suggest, instead of using your warm lighting, your typical bulbs, get yourself a daylight bulb. This has a blue cast to it that mimics the daylight. So here for this demonstration, I'm going to show you a typical warm bulb versus a cool daylight bulb. As you can see with the cool light, you can see the stitches a little bit better. It's just a little bit more defined and a bit easier on your eyes. Daylight bulbs are very easy to find wherever you shop. Typically for your bulbs, you will find your daylight bulbs there. They're inexpensive and easy to use. Tip number seven, label your yarn. Maybe you're like me and you special order your yarn and you think you've ordered enough and you haven't. And if you're working on a project that requires multiple colors of yarn, sometimes those colors are very similar and you're not quite sure what you use. This is where this comes in really handy. As you can see, this is nothing fancy, but is functional. This is all I need. I keep this in a drawer. Uh, it's just there for ease, and I can easily figure out which yarn I need to replace in order. All I do is I take the binding here, and I cut off the portion that has the information, the color information that I need, cut a little slit into the fold here, and then just add the yarn. Tip number eight, use a larger hook for your foundation chain. A typical issue when you're working on a project is for it to grow on you. It doesn't necessarily mean you're doing anything wrong. It's usually just because you're working with a chain and building stitches inside of it, and it's naturally going to grow because of that. So a simple solution to this is not worrying about trying to uh, chain more loosely or anything like this. Just go ahead and go up a size or a size and a half with your crochet hook. For this example, I used an eight millimeter for my foundation chain, and then I went down to a 6.5 for the rest of the stitches. And that's just because I don't have uh, a one size up exactly. But as you can see, just going up a size, size and a half really does make a difference. Tip number nine, how to create a smooth round. Here you can see with the first sample, I have finished the round with a slip stitch and then I secured with a little knot. And here in sample number two, you can see it is completely gone. And this is a very simple thing to do. When you're coming to the end of your round, do your final stitch. And then instead of finishing it with a slip knot, remove your hook. Now you can use a darning needle here or you can keep using your hook. Take your yarn and going into the final stitch that you are going to slip stitch into, go in, pull your yarn from the back through, moving over to your last stitch, going into the back loop only, pull your yarn through again. And at this point, you can just go ahead and weave in that end and you are good to go. And tip number 10 is the handy dandy paper clip. Now you've probably seen this hack many times and it's because it's a good one. When you're working on a project and you need to take a pause on it, a great way to prevent it from unraveling is to simply take your paper clip and loop it onto your piece. But let's take this a step further. You can also use your paper clip for a stitch marker. Now, I did not come up with this idea on my own. This is something I saw on the web, and I have a link in the description box below to the website that I found it on. I believe her name is Future Girl, and she came up with the coolest little way of folding this to make the perfect little stitch marker. 
In a nutshell, what she did with this was she took the center portion and pinched the uh, wires together. She took the outer wire here and made it go in line with this center portion. Then she took the middle one and pulled it out ever so slightly. I think this is how she intended it. If not, uh, like I said, go ahead and check out her website, but this is how I use it and it works like magic. I hope you found these tips useful and I hope you found something that you can add to your uh, crochet arsenal. Be sure to check out these videos where I go into more detail on how to do the invisible seam and the magical tail.